It's 6.30. I got my coffee. I got my tablet. I got my sign. I got my robe. It's cold. I left the windows open. It's cold. I don't know how cold it actually is, but it feels cold. So... Alright, let's do this thing. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Today is Tuesday, August 6, 2016. My name is Jeremy. And this is my first cup of coffee. I'm nearing the end of my Four Sigmatic Dark Roast Mushroom Coffee. What's this one? Chaga and Lion's Mane. If you don't know much about mushrooms, you should check out mushrooms, because mushrooms are really cool. Uh, mushrooms genetically are closer to people than they are plants. How nuts is that? That is why, at least some people theorize, that is why mushrooms can have such dramatic and varied effects on our bodies. And what am I drinking this out of? I'm drinking this out of a mug that my mom got me for Christmas. So what was yesterday? Yesterday, I went to my, should I call it? No, I don't know if I should call it my office. The co-working space that I'm working in. And what's nice about this co-working space is that it's new. And of the, the co-working offices, I was the only one there. So I just plowed through work. Because there were no distractions. It was wonderful. Got a ton of work done. Went to, went to the gym. Um, tons of email. Hired somebody. Oh, it's just, bam. It's been crushing it. It's been great. Uh, today? What's today? I won't be making it in there. I got some work I gotta do from here. Got an interview. Um, it looks like I'm gonna try to do this today. So on Monday, this coming Monday the 12th, I'll be recording an episode of Martial Arts Radio in partnership with another podcast. Somebody reached out and we, we had some discussion. This other person, this other show, they often review movies. And so we batted back and forth and decided we were going to watch and then discuss a movie. We weren't going to watch the movie during the episode, but we we're going to discuss it. So I've got to make time to watch this movie. Now, ideally, I'll do it twice. Today, I think I'll do the, I'll do the first watch. I'm not going to tell you what, you, what, what movie it's going to be, though. Should I tell you? Return, uh, um, 36 Chambers. That's not the full title. But that's the one we're watching, the original one. Oh, coffee is particularly good this morning. Uh, so I'm going to try and squeeze that in, and then I'll coach CrossFit this evening, because swapping some days around to help somebody, another coach at the gym. And in between all that, just try to get through the stuff I got. I do. Look how bright this is. Mm. All right. Got some great questions here, and if you'd like to ask me a question, drop a blow. I will answer it tomorrow. Hmm. Love answering questions. Feeling a little more awake than yesterday. Yesterday I was pretty groggy. <laughs> Today I'm doing okay. All right. What are the keys to making it to black belt? It's a great question. And I can answer it in two ways. Let's start with the short way. Don't stop. That's literally the only key. As long as you don't stop training, you will eventually earn your black belt. I don't know anybody who's been training for decades that, you know, is stuck at their brown or red belt because they just can't get there. I don't know. I don't, never met anybody like that. There might be somebody. I'm sure there are people who change schools often enough that they can't go with that, that line. But that's the key. 
is you don't stop. Now, what's the longer way to answer that? The longer way is that there, there are many keys. Be open, practice, practice at home. I've never known anybody to earn their black belt without some practice outside of classes. Um, continue to get better, help other people. You know, there are, there's a long list of things that you could say will help you get there. But they all come a, a distant second to persistence. What else we got? Any advice for those who have trouble starting new habits? Yeah. So I, I try to create habits. I try to create a lot of habits. And I, I work hard at them. Because when things are habits, they don't feel as tiring to get done. Some of you may know, I live life by my calendar. I have some of the smallest things down on my calendar, like, you know, when I clean the cat's litter box to, I used to keep my meals on my calendar. That felt like a little much. And that feels overwhelming. So I, I try to create habits because that means that I'm doing things, but not feeling like they're on my calendar. There's like a cat hair on my ear. That's what I keep pulling out. Something going on there. It's driving me nuts. So if you want to start a habit, it doesn't start by being automatic. You have to remind yourself. So maybe that is putting it on your calendar or a note on your bathroom mirror, or maybe there's something, there's another place that you put it, maybe on your coffee pot. And you start by doing it. The easiest habits are the shortest and every day, I think. If something's going to take you an hour to do, it's going to take a long time to get there. Because you're going to find excuses. You're going to find other things that need to fill that time. If something happens once a week, you've got six days a week that you're not practicing that habit. So let's take the example of training at home. This is why we develop two minute martial arts the way we develop two minute martial arts. It's a daily program that takes you, probably by the time you, you bring up the website, figure out what you're doing and do it, it's three minutes, but it's two minutes of training. Very simple. And that was meant to get people into the habit of doing martial arts at home. Now, if you've never checked check that out, you can go to training.whistlekick.com. You can find that there. I would suggest making other habits similar. Make them daily, make them short, make them simple. And as you make, as that habit um, stabilizes, as you lock that in, then you can add it on. So if somebody has been doing two-minute martial arts for a couple months and they're nailing it, they're getting it done every day, Take it to three minutes or five minutes. Slowly increase that, just like you would anything else. Slow and steady wins the race, right? I mean, that's a cliche for a reason. What's another habit that I might pick? Let's say I wanted to go to the gym. Let's say I was somebody who didn't work out. You know, maybe I, I did martial arts twice a week, but I wanted to go to, you know, a weightlifting gym. I would start with the, what, what's my goal? Work backwards to my goal. My goal is to start that habit. Okay, I have to get there. What do I have to do to get there? Um, once a week, I'm gonna put seven pairs of shorts and seven pairs of socks and seven t-shirts in a bag and I'm gonna leave them in my car. Okay, now I can't forget that stuff. And then I'm gonna, Pick a time, ideally the same time every day. So this is why a lot of people go before or after work. I'm gonna go right from work to the gym. Now what if three days a week I have an hour, but two days a week, let's, yeah. 
Weekends are easy. I can go whenever. Monday through Friday, I, I go at 5.30. Three days a week, I've only got 20 minutes. The other two days a week, I've got an hour. I'm gonna go 20 minutes every day. I'm gonna be consistent. I'm gonna get that habit in. Because at that point, it matter, doesn't matter so much what you're doing, it matters that you're doing it. Once you build a habit, then you can refine it. Just like if you're learning a form, you don't spend an hour perfecting the first two moves. You learn the form and then you constantly refine it and make it better and better and better and better. Once you get that habit of 20 minutes in, then maybe you start to shift around maybe, you know, three days a week that 20 minutes I'm doing this, but then the other two days where I have an hour I'm doing this. Build the habit. What's another example of a habit we can dig, we can dig into? Um, physical training seems to be the one that people ask me about the most. Reading. Let's say you want to become a reader. 80% 80 80 of success is just being there. Yeah. Go back to the first question. What's the key to becoming a black belt? Persistence, showing up, not stopping, however you want to term it. So if you want to make reading a habit, pick a time of day that you want to read. Maybe it's over a cup of coffee. Maybe it's in the evening before bed. Maybe it's at lunch. Start with finding a book that you would love to read. Don't worry about what anybody else says. Find the, find the trashiest romance novel or the nerdiest biography or reread Jurassic Park for the 14th time. There's one, there's cat hair. Cat hair all over my face. My, my beard at this length is like Velcro. It's great for picking up cat hair. So if you got a book that you really wanna read, now you've got your why, and now you pick a time every day Let's say you want to read over coffee. Where do you keep the book? Next to the coffee pot. You want to read at the end of the day. Where do you keep the book? On the bed. You want to read at lunch? Put it in your lunchbox. You got to set yourself up for success with habits. Just because the book doesn't belong next to the coffee pot or in your lunchbox. Just because seven days of gym clothes don't belong in your car, who cares? Would you rather maintain that silly cultural norm that no one sees or cares about? Or would you rather build a habit? We've had a couple other questions around habits. So if that's not, if that's not enough, uh, probably best that you email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. I'll give you some specifics to your situation. What are some good, es good ways to de-escalate a tense situation? So we're talking tense situation. We're probably something talking about something that maybe could become violent, but is not necessarily on the brink of violence. I like humor. I did an episode of Martial Arts Radio that was actually based on an episode of another podcast I appeared on years before I even had a podcast about my, I think it was five or seven steps to de-escalate. I don't remember the name of the episode. I don't even think I used the word de-escalate. But here are some of the keys that, that I talked about in that episode. <sighs> Humor is great. So if you, if you can make jokes on the fly, especially self-deprecating jokes, right? Because if there's a tense situation, it's usually because there's conflict. Conflict arises when people are jockeying for position. If you remove yourself from the conflict, if you set yourself, even in, just in that moment, in a subordinate position, if you have 
the confidence to, to, to do that. You can usually pull yourself out of that situation. So if somebody's like, you know, they're mad and yelling, whatever. Just be like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, man. You know, I just, I had a bad day. I woke up to my cat stepping on my balls and it, it just set the tone for the rest of the day. I feel like everybody else has been kicking me all day long and that's maybe not as humorous as it could be, but I'm tired. Okay, so humor. Um, you can defer to the person. Hey, look, I don't want to fight you. There's no point in us figuring out who's going to win there. It's pretty obvious. That's a little bit easier when you're the smaller person. Um, and then the last one that I've, the, the last two that I remember off the top of my head, um, if it starts getting there, and, and there's an order to these. Uh, the last two are being crazy and being gross. So being crazy, you know, really, act, I mean, you really, you got to go for it. Um, being gross could be like blowing your nose in your hands and making fists and saying, okay, I'm ready now, you know, stuff like that. But as long as you can let go of your ego, you can usually talk yourself, talk the other person or people out of it. If they, if they really, they're really trying to take it to a violent place, you, you can't, you can't always stop it. But there's always a, a point where you, you could have done something. Like, let's take a, a very simple example. Somebody grabs your seat at the bar. Hey, that's my seat. Not anymore. You want to make something out of it? Okay, so at that point, right, what do you do? Your pride might say, this is my seat. I was sitting here. I want to continue sitting here. It's next to my, you know, my friends. This person knew this was my seat. They're being disrespectful. You have every right to assert your position. But is that worth getting into a fight? That's the tense situation that you have to make the decision about. And we, we have those every day. It might not be that clear. But there's always tension. And this is, this is why I talk about in, in, in almost everything I do regarding self-defense about observing people, learning to watch the way people act and identifying people's habits. Because if you know where those lines are for people, if you know what's going to set people off, you can avoid this stuff. If you're not good under pressure, the best thing you can do is take an improv comedy class. It's the best thing I know of to learn how to communicate quickly and effectively under pressured situation. Um, depending on where you are, you may not have that option. Like, I don't, I don't know, I could probably go to Burlington. Those of you that don't know, I live in central Vermont. I could probably go to Burlington and find an improv comedy class. But I did some in college, and because of the careers I've been in, I've had to do a fair amount of public speaking. So I do okay with that. Why do I do this show? Personally, I do this show. I mean, not there are benefits to Whistlekick, but personally, I do this show because it's improvisational. I have no notes. I have a couple questions to work from, which are really helpful, but I'm exhausted. Like I just got out of bed. I'm having a cup of coffee. My brain is not even working correctly. And by doing the show over a year, I've gotten pretty good 
at improvising. I just recorded an entire book from an outline. I improvised it. So there's a lot of value there. All right, 20 minutes, wow. I am getting long-winded. I remember when I couldn't even get seven minutes. <laughs> All right, homework coming in a second. Don't forget, subscribe, turn on notifications so you can see when we do the show. When do we do the show? Every weekday morning, 6.30 a.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube, but you can catch it later at firstcoupwithjeremy.com or in any podcast app. If you have a question to ask me, drop it below or email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com if you are a audio listener later. Love answering questions. I thank everybody who comes by live and contributes and participates. If you... I said all those things. All right, homework. I want you to reflect on your martial arts journey to date. Whether you are a black belt or are working towards a black belt, whether you have 74 stripes or you started class yesterday. I want you to think about your why. Why did you start? And why did you continue? Those might be different answers. I just want you to think about it. The longer I spend helping people with anything, whether it's business or martial arts, the more important I realize that the why becomes. If you don't know why you're doing something, you're not gonna know how to do it correctly. The why matters. So think about your why. Just spend a couple minutes contemplating that. Okay, I'll see you back here tomorrow. I hope you have a great day. Peace.